Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be creating a card featuring a fall theme. This card is part of a hop, and the hop is called the Craft Collab's Favorite Fall Colors Hop. Sweater weather has arrived, and we're all inspired by the glorious colors this time of year. We're each sharing our favorite fall color combinations in our projects to delight and inspire you. Enjoy our projects and thanks for hopping. <clears throat> this hop was organized and I want to thank her for inviting me to participate in this hop by Nicole Watt. Um, this is about the third hop that I've been asked to participate in and I was really excited when it was about fall colors because I do think the fall colors are beautiful and I do think that the, where I live in western Pennsylvania is beautiful fall foliage. Um, in a couple weeks from now the trees will all start changing colors. There will be beautiful burgundy colored leaves much like fired brick, marmalade, I mean Orange leaves, much like spiced marmalade, and yellow, much like our mustard seed and our squeezed lemonade. Brown is also a color of fall, and green. So today, my card focuses on sunflowers. I love sunflowers, and I also have some fall leaves here and some glitter paper. So that's what my card's going to be, and let's go ahead and get started. These are just here for prettiness sakes because they are so pretty. I had a ball die cutting all these cute leaves. Uh, I wish that I, what I should have done was just made a card with all of these on the front of it in a collage fashion. That would have been beautiful. But I think my, I think you'll like my card and what I, what I designed. Okay. Um, I'm using a stamp set from a British designer and the name of the company um, is called Debbie Moore Designs. This is Build a Flower, You Are My Sunshine. All right. I actually purchased this through Scrapbooking Made Simple. Um, it was demonstrated last year by Stacy, and I fell in love with the, here's what I fell in love with right here, how beautiful this stamp set is. It's got the gigantic sunflower. It says, happy birthday. You are my sunshine. Best wishes. And sunflower with a little definition. It's got a sunflower losing some petals, a sunflower center, some leaves. And it comes with this matching die set. So I put all of these to use in creating my card. And this is a close-up of the card that we're going to do today. All right. So it doesn't include die cut and it includes ink blending and it includes stencils and a sentiment and um, some real pretty background colors. And um, we're going to go ahead and start blending. This is just a laminated sheet of paper that I stamped on. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite stamp sets. Um, and then on the other side it is blank and what I'm going to do is use it to blend with. So let me just get this glare out of the way because that can be quite annoying. And I'm going to be using the ink blending brushes today. These are just a generic pair that I purchased off of Amazon for like less than 12 bucks. And they've worked out really nice. So, wait, the wrong cardstock. This is the one that I want, the blank one, so that I can do my ink blending. Let's get started with our squeeze lemonade. I'm going to start with my large tool. And I'm going to take this and blend it from the top all the way to the bottom. Now, this is a technique that I learned recently from a card day's work. Uh, you might be familiar with Jess Francisco. She's actually on this hop, so you can look for her in the links below. I'm not sure that she, uh, I'm not sure what order she's in in the hop. But I do know that she's one of the collaborators in this craft collab event. But she recently posted a video where she did some ink blending and went all the way from the top to the bottom with the color, gradually then doing an ombre effect. 
and it actually turned out really nice. She was doing a night sky. Of course, this is more like a daytime autumn uh, blend. I'm just going to go right into my mustard seed. I recently purchased mustard seed. Um, I came out with, when the Distressed Oxides came out, I, I think I purchased the first or the second set, and then I didn't purchase any more. I mean, I really enjoy them, but they're expensive, and um, I, I just couldn't see getting them all. Uh, not for when I have other mediums that I like to use. For example, I like watercolors. I like um, watercolor pencils. I enjoy using um, colored pencils. Um, and my favorite is pan pastels, which is what we're going to use today to color in our image. Now I'm switching over to spice marmalade. Okay, like, like what I'm doing is I'm taking each color and I'm blending from the top to the bottom and then I'm stopping to make an ombre effect. So of all the autumn colors, I think I think that the the maroons and the burgundies are my favorite, but I love sunflowers, so I wanted to create a sunflower card because um, they I think sunflowers are really pretty and I think they definitely you know, or a, like a sign of fall. Now we're going into the fired brick. And that's making a very nice line of blending right there. Go back in with my spice marmalade. I'm a little heavy handed when it comes to uh, pressing down. You don't really have to press down that hard. I doubt that my applying of pressure makes much of a difference, but it kind of feels good to get your frustrations out on that. At the end of the day, if you've had a rough day and it's been a stressful day at the office, you come home and press real hard to blend. Yeah, it's definitely a good feeling getting my muscles built up. Yeah, right. I'm going to go back in now with the mustard seed at the bottom here. And we'll soon be done with our blending project part of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oops. If you haven't yet purchased any brushes for ink blending, you, yeah, you definitely want to. Especially if you do like ink blending with distressed oxides. It definitely um, has been extremely helpful to me because I'm the kind of person that used to always get those um, marks, those round halo type marks whenever I would. Yeah, that was me. And so having the, I'm just going to put a piece of paper down here so I don't get marks on my paper from my fingers being inked up. Yeah, this has definitely helped me with my ink blending, you know, having this tool. So I'm just going to go up and blend a little bit more. There. So we have a nice background. Now, the uh, you can go over it again and again if you want to keep, you know, intensifying the color. But definitely when I see that, I think of the fall. I think of um, leaves on a tree. But I'm not going to go over it anymore in the interest of time. I am going to clean my craft, my not my craft mat, but my um, mat here. The one that I used to blend on, this laminated piece of paper. I'm just going to spray it with water. I just use a uh, recycled bottle that I had some hair product in at one time. That's where I put my water in. And we'll just clean this off. And and the water takes it off just fine with me. No sense wasting my stamp cleaner. No sense at all. I just put that under my table with my scraps and I have it available then. Okay. Um, so before I started the video, I inked a, uh, I inked my focal point image with 
um, Distress Ink. This is just regular um, cardstock. The cardstock that I used for my ink blending was Not Your Mama's Cardstock by Brutus Monroe. It's a nice heavy duty 130 pound uh, smooth white. So it makes for very nice blending. All right, let me get my pan pastels out here because they are going to be, I think, the highlight of the video. And it's kind of cool that I'm using two different types of coloring mediums with this project. Wasn't planning on that when I when I decided to do this, but it actually worked out really nice, so that I'm glad that I did it. Pan pastels, if you're not familiar with them, are artist grade pastels that are put in a pan and in a palette that you can then simply take your brush, your little applicator, get a little bit of uh, pigment on there, and this is going to be die cut, so I can I don't have to worry about staying in the lines. What I love about the pan pastels is they're so easy, and after having just ink blended the heck out of that piece of paper, it sure is nice to switch over to pan pastels, which are so easy to apply. You don't even have to apply hardly any pressure, and if they're so easy, the little applicator just glides across the paper. This is so nice. I don't have to worry about staying in the lines because I'm gonna die cut this out. And I can keep going over it and over it again and again to get a deeper color. And this is a nice bright yellow. It reminds me of sunflowers, obviously. And I think it makes a really nice color for this flower. And then I have some browns and I'm gonna switch my applicator. And you don't have to dig into this uh, little pan, you just simply tap it. it. Just takes a little tiny bit of pigment, that's all it takes. And look how quick that was. Let's go back in with our yellow and round out the edges here. Okay, that was pretty easy. That was pretty quick as well. All right, I also um, kind of like this color. It's sort of like a gold, it has like a little bit of a gold shimmer to it. So with pan pastels, if you want to switch brushes, all you have to do is take a paper towel, wipe the color off this brush, and then I can just dip right into my other color that I like. This gold, it's nice. It makes it look, you know, more weathered. So, um, I guess more along the lines of a sunflower. So, I'm just going to go over them. And I'm not worried about, you know, getting every single spot on the petal. You know, I'm just freestyling it here folks having fun because that's really what it's all about having a good time and making something fun and pretty something that you can share with others because it's encouraging to others to know that you spent the time to make them a card now I'm going to switch over to my greens so I've got this other set that has blues greens and grays even has a beautiful purple color for all those purple lovers out there and I love purple. I'm going to go ahead and dip into my yellow green. Start my leaves. And what I'm going to do with this is just go ahead with the yellow green on the stalk and on the leaves. Because I stamped this with vintage photo distress ink, um, it makes a nice border. And it just reminds me of sunflowers and I'm going into my deeper green now and I'm just going over the lines here that the stamped image has and I'm not even being real fussy about it I'm just doing it there you go and and I'm happy with that I could do a little bit more blending of the leaf if I wanted to don't have to doesn't matter because it looks nice and <clears throat> if I would have tried to ink blend that or use my um, little makeup brushes to color that in with ink, I'd still be working on it. So that's what I love about Pan Pastels. Quick and easy. Cleanup is a cinch. Your hands will get a little bit um, like chalky, but it washes right off with soap and water. And then um, I'm not going to do this on the for this video, but what you do is you would take your die cut and just line that up whoops the other way <laughs> we've got it here send it through the die cut machine 
and it's going to come out perfect, all right? With pan pastels, you do have to spray them to set the chalk type material. I just use hairspray. Uh, this is just the hairspray that I bought like at a discount store. Um, smells good too. And it's sort of like the maximum strength hold. And I just keep my um, nozzle about 12 inches up or 12 to 6 inches, between 12 to 6 inches away from the card and um, the image that I colored. And then I just spray it and then it's ready to be, like let it dry for a few minutes and then it's ready to go. All right, so the, in the interest of time, I've already created a blended panel. Now this one I blended yesterday compared to the one I blended today. One thing that I did find out while doing this is that the, um, the colors kind of fade a little bit with distress oxide. So what I first lay down compared to what actually is there the next day, you know, it does fade a little bit, but it's still really pretty. And it still definitely reminds me of the fall. All right, let me grab my tape runner. And we're just gonna assemble this card, folks. It's not gonna take much longer now. Um, I hope that you're enjoying this video and I hope that you're enjoying this card. If you love sunflowers like I do, say, I love them, Tracy. I love them too. And um, give me a shout out if you like the card. Thumbs ups are always appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber, I would definitely love it for you to um, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to grow my channel to get to 500 real soon. I'm going to have a massive giveaway when I do reach that goal. So you'll want to subscribe and then you'll get notified. If you hit the notify button, the little alarm button at the bottom, ring the bell so that you can get notified. But aren't these pretty? These are like leaves that I had die cut out um, whoops, I just mixed in the ones I wanted to use. I shouldn't have done that. I was too busy playing with all the pretty colors. Got carried away. What I'm doing is pulling out the leaves that I want to use for my bottom accent section. All right, so just give me a second here because I just, I had them laying on top, but I got all carried away. All right, I need a total of five leaves. Um, let me see here. I've got all kinds. I've got big oak leaves. I've got maple leaves. I have little maple leaves. I've got gold maple leaves, leaves. Okay, there we go. That's a big one. Okay, there's a smaller one there. And that is gold total. I did, I did cut some out with gold foil, but we're not going to use those today. Okay, I think I dug through here and found everything that I need. Take one last look. I'm just going to dump the whole thing. These little bowls are awesome for doing this type of tedious sorting and having little uh, pieces and bits available at your fingertips. Um, and so I got these at a at a store that um, sells arts and crafts made by countries where the church sends missionaries. I think it's called like One Vision or something. Don't quote me on that, folks. But uh, when I saw them, these little bamboo, I think they're so cute. And they hold the little die cuts and they hold the little um, pieces that I need. And they don't get lost. All right. Okay, sorry about that. I got myself all excited playing with the pretty colors. All right, I don't need that many. Okay, so we're going to need, yeah. Okay, we've got, so that's kind of like a champagne color. I have one copper, I have two darker brown. All right, so we'll use champagne. And put the copper in the middle and switch these out. Okay. All right, so what I did, I trimmed my leaves. So I went ahead with my scissors 
and I just trim those because I kind of tuck them under the petals. And I have two flowers here, so I have lots of leaves. I also um, put a coating of Winkostella. I know you probably can't see it, but they're nice and shimmery. They've got a shine to them. Now to assemble this, I started at the top. No, I started at the bottom. I put my leaves in a row down at the bottom. Let me fold this. I'm sorry if I'm off camera. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, we've got this here. Here we go. No, that one's the same color as the one in the middle, so we'll do this pretty chocolate brown. I'm getting all those nice colors in. All right, I'm going to use some art glitter glue to adhere. And I'm just gonna put a little dab of art glitter glue on. I'm not going to go crazy with the glue. I'll make sure I have it right, yeah. Just checking to make sure my top fold card is is on the right is is in the right direction before I go gluing all these down. Then we'd have a bunch of upside leaves, upside down leaves, and there's not a problem with that. If you want to put your leaves at the top and have them facing down, not a problem. It's, it's whatever you like. Uh, crafting and card making should be fun and relaxing. Sometimes making a video can be a little stressful but I try to have fun with it and not take myself too seriously. Well, I hope that you take a moment to check out all the other videos in this hop after you watch mine. I know that some of the participants are giving away prizes um, and I know that you're gonna learn a lot and you're gonna see some beautiful fall themed cards by being um, a part of this hop. So please, please um, make sure you check out all the other participants and what they make. The next person in this hop is linked below in my, in the box below, which has details. And you can find that person and click on their link by checking that out below. Now this part here is just basically you know, arranging the flowers, you know, trying to decide how to uh, lay them on the card panel. This is more, you know, about aesthetics, what looks balanced and what looks attractive, you know. So I'm going to put the sentiment right on top to the side. Oh, I think what I want to do, I'm going to switch it. Haha. -ha. That way it's going to be on this side of the card. Sometimes I do switch things up. You'll notice that my original card had the sentiment to the left, and this time I'm going to the right. What a rebel I am, right? I'm gonna tuck that under, and this one will go on top. Yeah, that's what we'll do. First we'll put this one. And it's okay with me that some of my petals stick off to the side. I think it looks pretty that way, that they're not stuck. And I'm not gonna trim them because they're way too pretty to be trimmed. They can just hang out on the side of the card. Okay, one thing I did wanna be careful of is that I didn't cover up my sentiment. So I did, uh, I did try to stay mindful of where I was placing my flowers for that. Now I can place some leaves and I'm just going to tuck these under, under the, um, the heads of the flowers. All right. Now that one just wants to stay under already. I better put a little glue on you first, buddy. Otherwise you're going to be popping up and not sticking. Okay. I can't wait to see everybody's cards. Oh, this video is getting a little bit long, folks. I'm sorry. 
I really did want to keep it at like 20 minutes, but I'm at 25 already. I can't help it. I get so excited when I create. And I like to explain what I'm doing so that you can see kind of the thinking, where my thinking came from and what my thoughts were. And, you know, it gives you ideas too so that you can go and pull out a flower that you have in your stash. And even if you don't have a die cut, you know, just fussy cut it. And make yourself a beautiful flower card. Okay, there you go. We've got um, um, my card for this hop. And this is my card. And I hope that you like it. Again, I want to say thanks for letting me be a part of the craft collab event, which is the My Favorite Fall Colors YouTube hop. Um, hope that you're going to check out the description below. Make sure that you go to the next person's channel so that you can um, watch their video and then make sure you watch all the videos in this and make sure you leave comments because that really is a helpful way of us knowing that you know you found the hop to be useful and that you um, got some good ideas and inspiration because that's what it's all about getting ideas and inspiration off of each other so that we can take our talents of making cards share them with each other, and then share them with the world to make it a more hopeful place. Thank you very much for tuning in, and have a great day, and have a hopeful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.